this video we will be taking a look at the T90 tank and some of the problems the tank has, or rather, used to have. We will take a look at the original T90 tank from 1992, the more modern T90A and even the most modern T90M tank. Let's first take a look at the original T90 tank. As the name suggests, it first appeared in 1992, but for the time it wasn't really that good, as some people are led to believe. The base armor of the tank is the same as one of the T-72B model 1989, which has the same turret armor as the T-72B from 1985. Rather than improving the turret protection, they kept the one they already had. Why is this a problem? Well, unlike the T-72B model 1989, the T-90 had the Stora active protection system which was effective against anti-tank guided missiles. But the problem was that the Dazzlers occupied a large portion of the turret's front where the Contact 5 explosive reactive armor could have been placed, and Contact 5 drastically improved the protection, especially for that time. This meant that anything that was not an ATGM could have hit and even penetrate that area, and that included all hand-hand -hand launchers like RPGs and any enemy tank that fired APFSDS or HEAT. Unlike the T90, tanks such as T80UK, which was the most modern T80 variant at the time, had Stora Dazzlers placed on top of Contact 5 area, which meant that they had no weak spots on the armor, unlike the T90. Another problem is that, again, unlike the T80UK, it had no thermal sights, but rather only passive infrared sights. I know T80UK that I keep bringing up was produced in low numbers, but so was T90. It was originally produced in very low numbers, maybe even less than T80UK, not to mention that even some standard T80U tanks started receiving thermal sights since 1992, which really doesn't sound that good for the T90. Now again, compared to all T80 tanks Russia had, its mobility was rather poor. It used the same engine T72B used, which had 840 horsepower compared to 1100 or 1250 horsepower gas turbine engines the T80 tanks had. In 1996, the decision was made to standardize the T90 tank and that the T80U production would gradually reduce and the primary focus would be on export. Later that year, General Galkin labeled the decision to standardize on T90 a mistake because it was too slow compared to T80U tank and provided no advantages over it. And I have to say, he was right. So, in conclusion, T90 model 1992 had weak spots in the armor, had no thermal sights and had rather mediocre mobility compared to the best tanks of the time. Although it was decided to standardize on T90, its production was rather poor, where T80 was kept in production for Russian army until 2001 and it was produced in hundreds. It wasn't until the T98 that the production of T90 really peaked, and that was 12 years after T90 entered production. So what about T90A? Well, the situation improved a bit, but it's still not that bright. T90A received a new valid turret which really improved the protection, but again, they kept the Stora Dazzlers the same way. They are still mounted on the armor and not allow placement of Contact 5 blocks. The armor is better, yeah, but why not improve it even further with Contact 5 EREA? I don't understand. We know it's clearly not a problem since T-80 tanks have stored a place that way, as do Ukrainian tanks with their Varta APS. The tank did receive a better engine this time. Now it's 1000 horsepower, so it's more comparable to the more mobile T-80 tanks. The tank also received thermal sight for the gunner, which is good, but the problem is that the tank came out in 2004, and at the time most of the tanks in the world had thermals for both gunner and commander, where the commander in T90 could only access the gunner's thermal sight. But that was the case for T80 UK back in 1991, more than a decade before T90A was a thing. Also, compared to the most modern tanks of the time, T90A had no digital display for the commander. He had no access to the digital map which would display friendly units or where he would be able to mark enemy positions for the other friendly units to see. But now, T90M came out, which basically fixed all of the issues previous T90 tanks had. It no longer had a weak spot in the armor, had 1130 horsepower engine, commander's independent thermal viewer, digital display for the commander, and now even has good cruise survivability with autoloader carousel being very good protected. Keep in mind that even previous T90 tanks had some armor for the carousel, T90M just improved on that. 
Now, the one and only problem with T90M is the fact that the T90A reached the peak for the projectile length, with a new gun and ELTA loader being added to it. Unlike what most people think, T90M still retained the 2A46M5 gun from T90A and can load and fire projectiles such as Swinitz 1, just like T90A. But with T14 coming along with its 2A82 gun, which can fire a far longer vacuum 1 projectile, it's really problematic for T90M since it cannot fit anything longer than already mentioned Swinitz 1. So for the future, that is not good. Although there have been plans to actually put the 2A82 gun in T90M and having it to be able to fit vacuum 1 by actually cutting off the side armor and extending where the carousel is located so it could be able to fit vacuum 1. But that has not been implemented and it kept the same gun and out loader as T90A had. This could be done maybe in the future when T14 becomes more common so both T90M and T14 could share the same projectiles. But for now, T14 is the only one that can fire most powerful projectiles in Russia. And that would be all. Thanks for watching. I want to take this moment to thank all my Patreon supporters, especially Paddy for providing me with a proper microphone for recording the videos. So if you notice the sound is better than on my previous videos, that's the reason. And again, thanks to everyone who had been supporting me on Patreon, it really means a lot. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.